Good afternoon. My name is Bethany Fleming and I will be presenting to you uh, my action research project on how physical activity can impact student achievement in second grade literacy. So a little bit about um, my study was, you know, I really was starting to see a lot of my students off task and not engaged in my classroom and of course it's nothing that I wanted to see as an educator. Um, so what I really started paying attention to were the different times that I saw my kids disengaged, starting behavior issues, just not focused. So looking at all of those different things, I really was wondering how implementing physical activity would increase student achievement. And as I started you know, looking at all of those different things, I decided that what I was going to do was implement physical activity breaks in my literacy classroom. So what that looked like was at the beginning of literacy, right before we started any content, we had a five minute movement break. And we had another five minute movement break halfway through, or most of the time about 30 minutes, into that literacy class. So those were the two physical activity breaks that were implemented uh, to try to engage my students, to try to refocus them, and all of that was because I wanted them to achieve. So, um, so after looking and paying attention to everything that my students were doing, disengaging, those sorts of things, uh, physical activity implementation was kind of my, that was my goal. Uh, that's what I wanted to see if it would impact my students and help them achieve. Uh, the reason I did this study, um, I, wanted, I wanted that achievement in my literacy class. Uh, I also wanted to see students engaged in content. Um, I'm a firm believer that if they're not engaged, then they're not learning. Um, they need to be doing something, they need to be listening, they need to be involved in class discussions and participating, and that was not something I was seeing. So. Uh, the reason, you know, the reason for this study was so that I could see that in my students. I wanted to see how that physical activity would impact that student achievement and get them refocused and have them engaged on a day-to-day -day basis. So when studying and reading a lot of literature on physical activity in the classroom, um, what I learned and was seeing over and over again was that there are two different kinds of, two different categories that physical activity fits into when we're talking about movement in the classroom. So one of those would be um, kids moving around and being engaged in content. So that would look something like if I had my students in groups and they were doing something at stations, moving around the room. Uh, learning content, content related stations or like center work. Um, that might also look like having a scavenger hunt up around the room and students individually or uh, with a partner going around the room and maybe solving math problems on those cards around the room. So that's one category, having students engaged in content related skills but also moving around the room. The other category was just basically the, the energy booster, okay? So that would be something like what my research project actually was. So the, the energy booster is just the kids getting up, having a break, no content related uh, breaks for this one. Um, so it might be something like getting the kids up and having them do jumping jacks. It could be having them run in place. It could be having them, you know, uh, doing high fives or silly dances. Uh, it could be anything like that. So two categories of movement there. Content movement and then an energy booster or some kind of movement that's fun and non-content related. There are a lot of benefits of physical activity. We all know that if we go to the gym, 
then and, um, you know I, I practice running on the treadmill then I'm gonna I'm gonna start seeing benefits I'm gonna start running faster I'm gonna feel healthier and it's gonna become easier for me um, but there are also a lot more benefits with physical activity um, physical activity can help us or help our kids physically they can help them cognitively and they can also help them emotionally so what we start to see with physical activity in the classroom we start to see it impacting our students because cognitively it gets them refocused it allows them to um, you know have that brain break sort of sort of speak um, and you know just kind of chill out with the content take a breather get their mind off of it so that when we finish that break they can come back refocused so um, so then we have cognitively physically uh, it gives them gets their blood flowing okay we've our heartbeats getting up so physically we're helping them out and then emotionally you might not think about this um, just impacting their emotional state but if a student's having a hard time dealing with something then they're sitting at their desk and what are they doing they're thinking about it over and over again and if it's something you know if it's something bad enough it might it might bundle up a little bit of anger and they might start taking it out on the teacher behaviorally or on a friend who's sitting next to them so emotionally what physical activity does for those students is it, it disengages them from those thoughts it puts their mind on something else it gives them a chance to release that emotional uh, baggage so to speak and it ends up helping them emotionally so when they are finished with that movement break they can actually sit down and have that sense of relief so physically cognitively and emotionally those are three great ways that students are benefiting from physical activity that the research is showing not to mention how it's including or increasing uh, student engagement student participation and student focus which would include students who are on task compared to students being off task some results of physical activity research uh, just some that stood out to me uh, one of them a three-week study showed that um, after in, after in, after implementing physical activity in those three weeks students started participating students started uh, connecting with one another and they started having class discussions they were engaged okay that is the main point here the kids are becoming engaged and what are those results going to show those results are going to show that their achievement is increasing they are going to be growing in their knowledge and their skills in that specific content area all because they are being engaged and included with class discussions uh, another study showed a relaxed atmosphere we don't often think about that physical activity creating a relaxed atmosphere you would, might think that a physical activity break or some kind of movement would get kids re-energized and, and get them moving around the room and kind of rowdy but it actually does the opposite um, it actually allows them to kind of relax and uh, just after that breather they're refocused and they're ready they're ready they've had their break they're ready to start again okay compare it to maybe a five or ten uh, minute break that you might get educators maybe during planning how refreshed do we feel after we have just had a chance to take a breather okay so we're seeing that researchers are seeing that through their own studies so my research question was what effect does implementing two five-minute breaks physical activity breaks have on student achievement on formative assessments and second grade literacy I'm really zooming in on the formative assessments that are on a daily basis here in specifically second grade literacy uh, I started thinking about literacy um, because 
you know, 42% of my students were reading below grade level. And I teach at a Title I school, so this isn't out of the norm, so to speak. It's a little bit higher than normal, but we're used to seeing these kinds of, of percentages. But it's definitely not good and definitely something that we want to improve on. So out of those 42% of second graders below grade level, 31% of those had an IEP that included either ADHD or ADD. That would be why I chose physical activity as my source of implementation, because those are the kids who are needing the fidgets, who are needing the movement breaks, someone is coming and asking for them so they can be taken to a movement break or assisted with a movement break. So I just started thinking, hey, what about all my other students? If some students need a break like that to refocus, why not my entire class? How can that impact the achievement in my second graders if it can benefit just a small number of them? Because all of them have have trouble sitting for a long period of time. As an adult, I have a hard time sitting for a long period of time. I need to get up and I need to stretch out. I think it's the same for my students and for all of our students. So one thing I started to see was I was getting in the habit of having them, you know, work, 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 and they weren't getting that break. So I started seeing the disengagement and I started seeing, you know, the behavior issues pop up. And so, I started thinking, well, what effect, what effect is that physical activity actually going to have on my second grade literacy achievement scores? My class had 19 students, uh, 10 of them were girls, 9 of them were boys. Uh, they were about 7 to 8 years of age, all of them. I had two students with an IEP for speech, uh, students with IEP for reading, um, four students with behavior interventions, and some of them also included 504s, which aren't as in-depth as the IEP, but they are still something that, as an educator, we have to follow by and provide for those children. I also had four students reading above grade level and four students reading below grade level. The ones reading above grade level were receiving interventions for gifted and talented services for reading. That left me a lot of students right there in the middle. They're either kind of sliding by, barely making it, or they barely got there. Okay, so a lot of room for growth right there for those, for those kids that are right there sitting on grade level. Some things that I used for my study. Um, what I decided to do was implement the formative assessments. I took them three days a week. I collected data for formative assessments on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. All of those formative assessments were common core aligned with second grade standards, second grade ELA standards specifically. All of those directly correlated with the day-to-day -day standards or targets that we give our students. Um, teachers, we probably know them as I can statements. Okay, to put it more simply. So all of the I can statements that those students uh, see and uh, talk about daily, those come from the Common Core Standards and all of those were aligned when creating the formative assessments. Uh, all of the assessments had different formats. So we might see Venn diagrams, we might see multiple choice, we might see a question on a post-it. Okay, but all of them had different formats uh, just to go along with the different units. Whatever they required, whatever would best fit and accommodate that standard being taught was the kind of format that the assessment was given. Uh, each formative assessment also had an answer key or a rubric assigned to it to prevent any kind of bias that a teacher might give to the students. We all know that it exists. We kind of want to ignore the fact that it exists, but uh, best practices for a professional is to always have that rubric there uh, just in case we get a little bit confused on 
well, they did really good here, so I'm going to give them a point. But, oh, this student, I don't think they tried so hard, so we're not going to give them that point. Uh, rubrics really um, don't allow that to happen, and they keep teachers on track with giving the correct amount of points. I also used uh, a tally chart to uh, track the on and off task students after that second movement break. That was just using a simple tally chart. The movement breaks that we were given, um, that we were giving our kids, uh, came from GoNoodle.com. Uh, if you haven't used it before, it is a great site. GoNoodle gives students the opportunities to do a bunch of different things for their movement break. They're all timed, so if you're looking for a three and a half minute break, it's on there for you. If you're looking for a five minute break, it's on there for you. These different uh, movement breaks give students the chance to do sports related, kinesthetic type movements. Uh, they give them a chance to do silly songs or silly type movements. Uh, so it really gives them that opportunity for the brain break that they need, especially when we're talking about getting that refocused and re-energized movement break into them. Here are some examples of some formative assessments that I used during my research project. So as you can see here, we have just a five question formative assessment. You can see multiple choices being used, fill in the blank, and I also have a provided rubric already there for me to prevent any kind of bias. This is an example of a story element, a literacy standard being taught. This is an example of an assessment that I gave during a unit uh, on a Wednesday. This is a Venn diagram and our common core standard was comparing and contrasting characters from two different stories. So you can see here that I already have the rubric into the assessment and what I had done was noted on there that students had to have three correct responses in each category. So I had several items that they could have come up with, but they only needed three. But again, they were already there. I didn't have to guess and wonder if something was okay. I had my rubric there. There was no questioning if a student had it right or wrong. Again, to prevent that bias from happening when grading the assessments. Here's another example. This was a Friday assess assessment that was given and here the students are retelling. So this Common Core uh, standard actually goes along with the intermediate students with summarizing. You might know it more as summarizing. In second grade, that summarizing word is just kind of dwindled down to retelling. So with this specific story, the kids read Goldilocks and the Three Bears and had been studying it, and their formative assessment was on retelling the story in the beginning, in the middle, and in the end. And again here you can see that the rubric that I used to grade this assessment was already written down. So I knew exactly the points of the story that students needed to be writing. Here's an example of the tally chart that I used. I used it Monday through Friday and all I did was simply mark the students who were off task after that second movement break. So it took about 30 seconds, not even a minute, um, after they were given their task to complete, I simply picked up my chart and I would tally the number of students who I saw that were not on task. So out of 19 kids, if I had five kids who were talking or misbehaving or not doing the correct thing, I would simply put five tally marks and then I knew 14 kids actually were on task for that day. Again, formative assessments were completed three days a week. The ones that were averaged at the end of the week were only those three that were given on the Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. They were all Common Core aligned, and, and again, we used them uh, with our ICANN target statements that the students are familiar with. So here is my baseline data for Unit 1. This data is without implementing physical activity breaks. So what you can see here is that for a four-week unit, 
I have 50% of my students scoring above 70%, and I have 50% of my students scoring below 70%. Okay, so we're half and half right there. Why aren't, why aren't more of my students scoring higher? Uh, there are some common things that we see throughout the year in teaching and definitely specific to this uh, class. We see the unfocused kids. We have the on task and we have the off task. Okay, that's seen in every classroom, that's normal. Our job is to make it more normal to be on task than off task. Okay, kids aren't getting their activity. We have absences, which of course impacts student achievement because they're missing that content. We can always go back and reteach it. We mean to go back and reteach it, but sometimes they just don't get the full effect if they're not having that mini lesson and then they're not getting that collaborative work and then they're not getting that independent practice when it's after it's taught. So absences have a huge impact on student achievement. So after implementing for two different units, here we are showing unit one, no implementation. Unit two and unit three, we have implement, started to implement the physical activity breaks. What you're starting to see here is a shift, okay? We start to see a 20% increase in student achievement scores, which isn't a whole lot, okay? But it's something. We're starting to see the growth. The students are starting to refocus. The students are starting to engage themselves. We're having class discussion, behaviors going down, okay? So check out this right here. The 50, below 50%, unit three, eight weeks into movement breaks, we don't have any students scoring below 50%, which is huge. Comparing our no movement break unit, unit one, our baseline data, compared to unit seven. Now unit seven is six weeks into our implementation of physical activity breaks. So by unit seven, we have a huge shift going on here. 20% of students at unit seven are scoring below 70%. 20%. Well, that means that the other 80% are now scoring above 70%. So we're talking students moving from apprentice to proficient, students moving from novice, some of them moving all the way from novice to proficient, okay? So we're starting to see that physical activity is really impacting these students, 80%. 80% are above 70% on their average achievement score. That is a major deal, okay? But why not more? What about that 20%? Again, we're still seeing absences, okay? Uh, seven units until the school year as educators, we know that we're expecting more out of our kids, okay? So those formative assessments are getting a little bit more in depth and require a little bit more detail. Some students might just be lazy, okay? Maybe that's really hard for our struggling readers. Maybe we still are seeing a little bit of behavior issues around this time, especially from those low performing students who are just having a hard time with the content. They don't want to admit that and instead of someone realizing that they're not understanding it, they're choosing to act out instead. But 80% of students scoring that high compared to our baseline data is amazing. Comparing girls and boys in their growth, uh, I love looking at this slide. So here we can see unit one and unit seven, and it's broken into girls and boys for each unit. So girls started in unit one at a 68% uh, average achievement score. By unit seven, girls had gone up to 80%. Okay, so that's a 12% increase for students, which actually equals an 18% growth increase score. So girls' growth went up by 18%. 
okay? Not too bad. Boys, on the other hand, boys' average score was a 60%, okay? By unit seven, that had gone up to 87%. So what we're talking about there is a 45% growth increase for the boys, 45%. That is huge when we're talking growth. Why such a difference between the girls and boys? You know, a couple things that we might think of, maybe boys have shorter attention spans than girls. So those physical activity breaks are actually benefiting those boys a little bit more than the girls because they're really able to stop what they're doing, go and do something else, that doesn't require a whole lot of thought, getting that energy out, and then they're able to come back, refocus, because they're not sitting down for that longer period of time. Whereas girls, we're a little bit more laid back, you know, we can kind of take things in strides and sit there until we're allowed to get up. So just a couple of ideas maybe on why boys are achieving growth at such a higher percentage. So what we really found from this data, or what I really found from this data, was that physical activity is in fact impacting student achievement in second grade literacy. 60% growth of students scoring 70% or above is what we found. When we talk 60%, we are talking low performers moving to high performers. We're talking the difference of you know, your class scoring in the novice apprentice and moving them up to proficient and distinguished. And that is our goal. We want to see that growth as educators and as, you know, teachers of second graders. This is a huge year for them, okay? They're really starting to read. They're building that confidence. And these physical activity breaks are really giving them that chance to uh, uh, refocus and re-engage and that's what I saw. Um, we saw that those breaks are reinforcing their learning, as we could say. So these physical activity breaks, I really think are going back and connecting to those students and benefiting them cognitively, physically, and emotionally because we're seeing a little bit of less behavior. We're seeing students on task more than off task and we're really seeing them engaging it more in class discussions and participation in class. Tracking my on and off task students, what I found was after implementing physical activity twice in my literacy class, the off task percentage dramatically dropped. So what this is showing is the number of on task students after implementing physical activity, and by the time we make it to Unit 7, I've doubled the number of students who are on task. Doubled it. We went from 30% of my students to 60%. So we've doubled the, the percentage of students who are now on task every day. The number of students who are off task has dramatically decreased. Okay? A couple reasons for this, okay? Um, some students are still off task because, again, maybe their IEP, maybe something that is, is holding them back is their struggle, their struggling reader, okay? They're still absent. Um, they have something cognitively that, that is still blocking them from achieving, okay? We're still having um, a little bit of disinterest in content and as the content gets a little bit harder, we, you do still continually see several students who just are off task uh, because of that content being a little bit harder. But all in all, the on task percentage of students doubling, I think that is a huge statement when we're talking about physical activity in the classroom. That physical activity really helping those students stay on task be engaged in the classroom and you know what even though it's not helping every child and every child is not able to stay refocused and on task all the time it's definitely benefiting a large enough percentage of students to actually implement it so as I'm thinking about my whole data 
uh, analysis and everything that went along with my research project. You know, I really feel like physical activity is something that needs to be implemented in every classroom, no matter the age, no matter the grade. You know, I really saw that the relationship between being engaged and on task really links together with the achievement that we are seeing on the assessment scores. Uh, physical activity really helps the students in all those different ways that we've already talked about. And action research in itself helps us to see those patterns. Uh, so when we are thinking about different classes, math classes and social studies classes, um, psychology classes, anything that these kids are getting to up into the high school level, uh, physical activity is letting us see these patterns. Hey, they're not engaged right here. Um, okay, let's give them a break. We're starting to notice those different times where they are off task and we're linking that to, well, when was the last time that they had a break? When was the last time I had them up and moving around? Is that really affecting the way that they're sitting there? And I think that action research really benefits uh, the education system in that sense that we are now looking for those patterns in the achievement for students. Uh, physical activity, this thinking about physical activity in my research project, I really am hoping that it benefits the colleagues that I work with because you know we always have a lot to learn from each other but I really think that the action research in itself can benefit instruction. It can really benefit educators in how their students are learning and how that is affecting their achievement. I think that educators have a lot to learn from one another and I think action research when it provides that data and that data has been analyzed, it gives teachers or educators something to look at and something to start with and say, hey, this worked for somebody else and it helped their students achieve, so why don't we try it in my classroom so that it could help us achieve. And doing that through action research, students I think are going to be uh, benefiting all over the world. Thank you so much for allowing me to present on physical activity to you.